Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We honor you. Friends, once again, welcome to the Porter's Gate online broadcast. My name is Isaiah Phillips Akintola. Wherever you are joining me from this wet, cold morning here in the Western Cape, I want to welcome you to another beautiful time in the presence of God. Wherever you are this morning, it's a great delight to share another moment with you in the presence of God. And of course, if you're joining me from South Africa, well, I want to welcome you this morning. Uh, and if it's afternoon at your end or evening, it's a pleasure to have you join us this morning. We, 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 we rejoice in what the Spirit of the Lord is doing, is emphasizing across the globe, across the earth. Well, this morning, by God's grace, we will continue to listen, of course, to the heart of God. That is why we he we're here. That is the main purpose of this uh, platform, to bring the heart of God, to reveal the speakings of God, the intentions of God, and of course, to help us to make sense of what the Lord is, you know, is doing and uh, expressing across the earth. Uh, so I want to welcome you this morning by the grace of God. Please give me a second. All right, I just want to welcome you uh, if, you're, if you are able to connect with us. Well, yesterday, uh, uh, it was such a strange uh, moment. Uh, I don't know what happened yesterday morning. I was, you know, all set, you know, and uh, I just continued to, of course, bring the heart of God only for me to realize that my mic was actually muted. Can you believe that? My mic was muted. And and I spoke for one good hour, you know, until one of the sisters actually sent me a message just as we were about finishing that. But there's no sound in all the platform. I'm like, what's going on here? And by the time I checked my mic, only to realize that it was actually muted. Well, I don't know what uh, that is all about, but I know one thing. I'd actually spoken into the, you know, into the, uh, uh, into the firmament, into, you know, into the air. And uh, it's not a wasted word, of course. God's words, amen, will not return to him empty. So that, those words were meant, I guess, for the principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness in high places. Because that's part of what we, of course, are dealing with on our platform. We want to believe the Lord that, you know, this new day, the Lord will help us to make sense of, you know, what he's doing, what he's saying and how to, you know, uh, position our hearts so that we are not, you know, captured within, if you will, the distractions and all that is happening. But before we go further into what we want to look into, what we believe God is going to say or speak to us this morning, let us pray. Let's take time to just, you know, bless the Lord and honor him this morning. Amen. Father, our heart once again rejoice in you. We celebrate your voice. We celebrate your, your speakings, your comings. Our heart rejoices. We thank you that once again we are alive. But not just alive, we are alive in you. We are alive and well. Yes, we thank you that you have given unto us, yes, life, breath. You've given us grace. You are equipping us. You are awakening us to, to hear, to see, to know, to understand. But more so to walk in the urgency of the day that we are not led astray, that we are not captured by the lies of the enemy. We rejoice in this. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you, you've been coming and you've been directing us to us the heartbeat of Christ. You are the one who reveals Christ to us. You are the one who makes us to know the path of life. You are the one who opens our eyes of understanding. Yes, who awaken us into new realms, new reality, new emphasis of the demand of the father so we thank you holy spirit in this new day you want us to know you more you want us to walk with you more you want us to be closer to you more yes and we cannot have enough of you so i pray once again holy spirit that this morning as we engage the heart of the father as you lead us into all truth because that's what jesus said he said when you come you will lead us into all truth we believe once again this morning you will lead us further and we are willing to be led you are the spirit of leadership. We are willing to go to follow you. We're willing to go to a place we've never been before. We're willing to hear new things. But we're also willing, yes, that you, as you re-emphasize the past things you've said to us, that we will, oh God, yes, become doers of those things. That we will not allow ourselves, oh God, to be derailed. We will not allow ourselves to be distracted. Rather, we will continue, yes, to listen. And to Paul say to us the place of your good pleasure. Once again, we present our lives to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable for your word says this is our chief duty, our key responsibility 
so we present our life our life means our thoughts our life means yes our faculty our desires, our aspirations, our motivations, our feelings. We present everything. We lay it all down before you this morning on your altar. We declare this morning that we know nothing except Christ and him crucified. Your word, in fact, has been emphasizing to me that one of the things we need in this season is to look more unto Jesus, is to consider more of Christ because one can get overwhelmed by all of the things that is befalling, yes, the sons of men. The things that are befalling humanity. Yeah, well, yesterday or a few days ago, we saw this tornado. This massive tornado, yes, in KwaZulu Latel, just sweeping and sweeping everything on the spot. Indeed, you are speaking to us. Nature is speaking to us. We saw what happened in Utenegh uh, in the Eastern Cape too, with, with, the, with, with the flood. God Almighty, lives have been lost. We've seen all these things. And these are the pointers to the days of the end. And we cannot look at these things and just assume, well, they are just coincident where it's just nature. No, in the days of your coming, nature will speak. Creation will, will, will speak. There's a groaning of creation for the manifestations of the sons of God. And so, Father, we can't fold our hands and look at this thing and just merely limit them to news. What are news? No. These are signs. And we've been talking about the signs, yes, of, of, of your coming, the signs of your appearance. Since we saw that massive uh, 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 eclipse in America, we know, oh God, that that is just some of the things that we need to be aware of. We pray, Father, this morning that you will help us, oh God, that all these things will awaken us, we quicken us to realign, to readjust ourselves, yes, to bring ourselves to the point and place where we better understand the speakings and your demand for this new day. Yes, Lord, that we will get rid, oh God, of the weights and, and, and sin and the burdens and all of those distractions, that we will travel light in this new day, oh God, that our heart, oh God, will be set on a journey. That, Lord, as you continue to shake the foundations of many generations, oh God, that our life will be once again discovered to be firmly rooted in Christ, in you, our Lord and King. This is my prayer this morning, that everyone that is joining us, that is connecting with us, will feel this burden, will feel, oh God, the need to readjust their life, to realign their life, to come back to the place of divine congruence with you, to come back to the place of divine symphony and harmony, that they will not do their own thing, but rather that which they hear and see you do is what they will respond to. I thank you once again this morning. As you speak to us with regards to the month of July, and Lord, we're not just re reducing this to just a monthly thing. No, we know, oh God, that there, 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 there's an increase in the bath tank. There's an increase, yes, yes, in, 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 the, in the reality of what, yes, is about to be birthed in our day. And we want to track you month by month, week by week. Yes, we want to track your heart, yes, Lord, day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, second by second. We want to track you. We want to know what you're saying. We want to know how to respond. We want to know how to live our life in such a way that brings glory, that brings honor, that brings adoration to you. We don't want to be swept away, oh God, by the tsunami of destruction. We don't want to go into, yes, aff aff affinity, oh God, with, with false security. We don't want to call a confederacy what they call a confederacy. We, we don't want to fear their fear. We want to know that our life this day once again is rooted in your love, rooted in your nature, rooted in your desire, rooted in your counsel. So that whatever time, whenever you decide to come, we are ready. We are not afraid. We are not seeking for a flight. We are not seeking for an escape. We just want to be rooted and be planted. We want to be our be about our father's business. We want to continue, oh God, to live a life that is worthy, a life that is relevant to your intentions, to your to your desire, to your prophetic desire for our day. We want to be, oh God, like like that watchman, not even like the virgins. We want to be like the watchman, yes, who came to sound the alarm to the ten virgins. That is the church you are calling us to be. We want to be that town cry. We want to be that watchman on the wall. We want to be the one who comes to announce. We want to be the announcer. We want to be the heraldus. 
the bridegroom is here. So keep us awake. It's a day of awakening. It's a day of awakening. Awaken us. Awaken us to the reality that we are a city set on the hill that cannot be hidden. Awaken us to the reality that we are the salt of the earth that must not lose, yes, oh God, a seasoning, a savo. We want to be awakened, oh God, yes, that we are the church that you're building that cannot be sunk. We are that church that you're building that cannot be destroyed by the, by the attacks, by the works of darkness. We want to be awakened that we are your bride. Our garment must not be stained. You say, these are the ones who follow the lamb wheresoever it goeth. <laughs> their lambs are not, their, 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 their garments are not stained. We want to be, oh God, uh, that reality, oh God, of a lamb that is burning, that his light never goes off. Awaken us, oh God. Awaken us. Help us to walk in the high places of your prophetic expressions and demand. Help us to know who we are, what we are. Help us to know that, yes, you in us is greater than anything out there. Help us to know our true treasure. You say where the treasure of a person is, that's where their heart will be. Yes, yes. We want to know where our treasure is and we want to, yes, set our heart towards that order. As Daniel opened, continually opened the window of his house towards Jerusalem, knowing where his help comes from, knowing where, yes, his allegiance is. In this new day, you are demanding and requiring of us to redefine our allegiance. So we thank you once again this morning. Speak to us. Speak to us. Bring us closer. Help us to have a clearer insight, understanding. Help us, oh God, not to live, oh God, yes, in, in the gainsay or in the hearsay. We want our ears, rather our mouth to be close to, yes, what, what you're saying, our ears to be closer to your mouth. We want our, our, our heart, oh God, yes, to feel the impulse, the, 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 yes, the, the speakings of your heart. We want to, oh God, live within the reality of your heartbeat. So once again, we honor you, we praise you, we love you, we love you, we love you. We dare to say this morning that you've won our hearts and you continue to fight for our heart. Nothing, nothing will take our heart, nothing will take our allegiance from you. <clears throat> we bless your name this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Friends, once again, welcome, welcome. I pray excuse me i pray the blessings and the goodness of god rest upon you i pray the father's intentions glorious intentions continue to flow like a river into your life i pray that whatever it is that is troubling you is distracting you or seeking to derail you that as we enter into this new month and as the father speaks to us about his prophetic counsels that your life will flow into yes all of the intentions of the father for you that you will not be shaken you will not be moved that you will not be derailed that you will not feel yes left left behind no you will be awakened to a sense of relevancy yes you will have that sense of knowledge that he is there with you yesterday the lord you know was speaking to me about this word he says, the one who sees what you do in your secret place will reward you openly. He said, when you want to pray, go, go into your closet and shut the door. He sees you wherever you are. He knows your need. He knows your pain. He knows your want. He knows those things. And he's willing, he's able, yes, to meet you at the point of your need. Maybe this is a word for everybody. Maybe it's just a word for somebody. But I want to encourage you. This was not my intention. I, I, when I just finished prayer, I just felt I needed to just say this word of encouragement to somebody. All right? Be encouraged. Be strong in the Lord. Yes. We all need that encouragement. You know, it took David. Oftentimes we think people that are, you know, that are strong. When you think of David, when you think of Samson, when you think of, you know, a, a Joseph, when you think of these powerful men, Moses in the scripture, we think that these people are so invincible. All right, no, but they're humans. Remember, God used people, people with frailties, people with, you know, limitations, people with fear and challenges, people with all kinds of issues. Those are the people God uses. I mean, people like me, so many out there, all right? 
you know one good thing about some of us is that we are willing all right to express our vulnerability you know the, the reason why we see many men of god leaders pastors even politicians you know found in all kinds of things and they find themselves collapsing is because they never show that other side of them that they are also humans that they are vulnerable i don't want to live in that dimension where everybody sees me as wow is that guy up there no <laughs> you, you can be up there and the enemy can bring you down remember even jesus the devil took him to the top of the of the mountain say look at all of these things all of the glory of this world you just compromise just bow down and worship me. I give it to you. Jesus said no. So there's a price to pay, hallelujah, to walk with God. That, that moment where you are able to say no for something, to something that you know, all right, will give you prestige, will give you, you understand, uh, you know, uh, 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 some cloud, will give you some, you know, affluence, influence, will give you, you know, a voice in the community. People have, have sold their soul. They've sold their, you know, their integrity, their values. So I understand the challenges. I feel it. All right? Or else I cannot be a priest. Bible says, for we have not a priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. We have to learn, amen, yes, not just, not, not just to know how to take the mountains and take the nation. We also need to learn how to minister to our infirmity, to our fear, to our weakness. How to minister to, you know, those persistent, continual challenges that just refuse to go. Those needs in our life. You understand? Yes, we don't magnify them, but we, we need to know how to speak, how to encourage each other because those things are real. But I'm saying despite those things, we're not stopping, we're not bulging. We're not going back. We're not turning back. Amen. We refuse to be a monument in this new day. Hallelujah. This is a church that God is building that is going to advance to that mountain. And we're not going to say, oh, Lord, we can't go to the mountain like Lord said. They say, move to the mountain. Lord said, no, I can't go to the mountain. That was how, amen, he, he established his own demise, his own destruction. All right. When God is speaking to us, we need to listen. So, friends be encouraged this morning as you continue to tune in to listen to amen the heart of god the mind of god it is my duty and my responsibility to continue to bring to you thus say the lord one of the key things the lord you know drop in my spirit this morning in fact this morning the lord dropped this word in my spirit three things are right, we need to look into we need to if you will you know I, I reconsider all right invest more into in the month of july all right and you know i don't do this i'm not a monthly prophetic person i'm not and i don't intend to be one or you understand but let's just lead amen let's move and allow the spirit of god amen to to lead us and to speak to us because like i always say whatever is happening in the spirit impacts the human realm so you cannot you know ignore you know time and seasons and you know ignore months if you will ignore weeks after all it's a new day and and you know and there's a there's a calendar there is a date attached to this day today amen is the fifth if you will you understand of the month so my, my, my point is everything about our life is interconnected one day, amen, at some particular date, you're going to step into certain things you've been waiting for for over 10, 20 years. That date, amen, matters in the prophetic calendar of God for your life. Are you getting the point that I'm making? So let's not be too spiritual and let's not to be too, you know, uh, 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 be technical about the things of God. We just want to flow, amen. We just want to flow. We just want the love, the, 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 the love of God and the life of God to continue to direct us. So three things the Lord, you know, kind of drop in my spirit. I believe it was the Lord, of course, because I, if I can hear God, all right, in this stage of my life in terms of what he's saying then uh it means all 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 these years one has been lying and that's not true three things the lord drew my attention to one is in the month of may we need to intensify our hunger and passion for christ and i i think i, I have a reason why the lord dropped that in us because he didn't tell me the reason he just gave me these three words okay the holy spirit just you know you know drew my attention to these three words one intensify your hunger and passion for christ two all right, making reading, reading, listening, and studying the word of God 
as a priority. That's the number two thing. But you see, these are basic elementary things, but they have great ramification in terms of, amen, the, the arch prophetic expressions of God, you know, within our life and within society. All right. Making, amen, reading, listening, and studying the word of God. All right. A priority. Go back. Amen. Take the word of God. All right. Before I start explaining, let me read, you know, all of them. The third one, all right, is let his assignment, God's assignment for your life be the focal point of your motivation. That's the third, third point. Let, all right, God's assignment for your life if you don't know it then that should be your focus if you don't know god's assignment for your life then that should be your focus you shouldn't be running around looking for all kinds of no in your in your day-to-day search for you know for you know for if you will life you know life many survivor you go to work you do all of that let your focus be god relocate me realign me to my purpose that's if you don't know it if you know it then make that amen your chief priority let that be your motivation can you see the world we're living in today i just told you while we're praying about you see that massive tornado now these are all signs we like it or not somebody may just want to push that away and say well well that's just you know nature and you link that to you know climate change yes that's 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 the reality but those are names we give to things but the bible says amen yes the the the, the awakening of nature tornado earthquake all of these things you understand flooding the bible says these are part of the signs of the end of days i mean you look at these things you think you are in america it's like those some of those tornado we we see on you know on tvs or sometimes in the movie i was looking at this and i'm like god and you literally see people weeping and crying because you know this tornado as as delve you know you know a, a destruction to their life to their home to their family you understand now so if you are still alive you you're still safe all right all of this thing is calling us to divine adjustment to divine adjustment to divine adjustment we need to adjust our life we need to adjust our priority we need because listen you can't even say in this last day that well uh, uh i think i'm in a better safe area no there's no safe area the only safe zone amen is in christ and and listen to this only in times of crisis do we actually know amen our position in christ only in times of crisis do we know amen our measure of faith our quality of faith only in christ only in times of crisis do we really know amen that indeed we we are we we love god or we don't because i mean imagine you wake up suddenly a tornado comes and and devastates your entire house something you've been building you've been investing you've been building for god knows how many years people you know have spent money try to put their house together just in one moment Everything is devastated. Only God knows how, how many people have also lost their life in that tornado because I saw it. I watched it. It's like, no, this is crazy. It can't be. And this, these are things that are now increasing. You can see the occurrence. The, you can see the, 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 the increase of, of these things happening. They are increasing on, you know, on, 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 you know, on, you know on a seasonal basis we need to be awakened the south african church the south african christians needs to be awakened all right and i'm not just speaking to south africans alone i know there are people also watching us from different part of the world but i am saying that this is a time where we need to really be awakened and know where our allegiance is <clears throat> all right friends so one thing God said is there's a need for you to intensify your hunger and passion for Christ. Why? These things, they have a way of pulling us away from Christ, from drawing our attention away, amen, from what we're supposed to be pursuing. You know, when you're bombarded with challenges, with needs, with, you know, uh, 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 with pain, all kinds of things happening, that's the period in time where people really don't think about you will have assumed that that's a time we need to move closer to god no but we get overwhelmed by you know the the the, the emotion of what we're going through we get captured and i can tell you this because i felt that also when i was in a dark state in a, that very difficult you know state of my life yes i understood that that you know if 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 you find yourself in in some you know dark hole i'm telling you 
You're going to be looking for all kinds of things. You, you will have thought, amen, you're going to cry out to God, particularly if you're crying out to God and it seemed not to be responding. You'll be looking for alternative. You'll be seeking for all kinds of, of course, you finally realize that those things really, there's no help anywhere. So my point is, we must not allow what may be happening in our life or even within our nation, amen. You can see the, 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 the topography of political you know, landscape in South Africa has changed and it will continue to change. Nobody can reverse it. We have to really brace up for a new day, amen. But the church, who are supposed to be, amen, the eyes and the ears, amen, of the Lord, bringing perspective and direction, needs to be even more awakened, all right, these are some of the things that I really want to, you know, speak into. All right, that as as we continue to experience our own unfolding of a of a new reality, <clears throat> that we must not draw back, we mustn't go back, amen. We we mustn't, you know, join affinity and compromise. No, this is the time to become even more seen, to become even more pronounced in terms of the light that we are called, amen, to shine. We're supposed to be, amen, that city, amen, that is set on a hill that is not hidden. It's time to voice, amen, yes, uh, 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 the, 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 the desires of God, the prophetic counsels of God. Because, listen, just as we see that tornado happen, this is the same way, you understand, God is going to sweep away the works of darkness in this last day. The Bible says in one hour, all the, 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 the ship of Tarsus, all those who are doing, you understand, are, are, are trading with, with Babylon. In one hour, all their ship is going to be, yes, yeah, capsized. It's going to be lost. And we need to know that these are powerful prophetic, you know, realities that are unfolding before our day. So don't, don't, don't think, all right, that whatever is happening around you, all right, is just some unique. No, no. The Bible says we're in a day where everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Everything that can be shaken will be sh will be shaken. Hebrews, two, you know, uh, twelve. I was trying to ex you know uh, uh, express the scripture yesterday. All right, it says, "See to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking." God is speaking to us, and He will continue to use all kinds of means and ways and method to get our attention. God is speaking. Do not, Amen, refuse Him. God will speak through the tornado. God will speak through the flood, yes, as devastating, as, 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 as heartbreaking as these things may be. All right? God will speak through, amen, relationship, broken relationship. God will speak through, you know, people that we, 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 we've put our trust in and somehow they will just disappoint us. God will be speaking through them. Where do you put your trust? Yes, God will be speaking through government, through people, you understand, through even politi polit you know, politicians. God will be, so that... You don't put your hope or trust in any man or anything. Is somebody listening? God will be speaking. And when God is speaking, don't now begin to tell me it thunders. That all you're hearing is thundering. God is speaking, but what they heard is, is thunder. They say, oh, <laughs> no. You've got to be able to know, to hear. You remember? When, when the Lord spoke on that day, they said, the people say it thundered. They, they, they thought that, that was just a thunder. God will speak through the thunder. He will speak through the lightning. He will speak through the, you know, through the ocean. He will speak through, you know, all kinds of things that you'll be cracking your head. No, you need a prophetic, amen, spirit. That's why I made a statement. I'm not sure if I highlight it. When, when, when we live in the kind of days that we live in, all right, all right. In fact, you will see it as you know my main uh, topic. I said new scope of all right, of existence require an advanced prophetic perspective. When we enter into a new day like the days we're living, we need a more advanced prophetic. What do I mean by that? We need to have amen somebody who can speak, who can interpret amen the times for us, who can give us clarity. What is this thing? What what was this flood all about? All right. Yes. Remember, man will always have their own analysis. Science will have their own analysis. You understand? Yes. Government will give you their own analysis. But what is God saying? 
Because whatever God is saying about whatever is happening around us is what should give us hope, what should give us perspective. And whatever he's saying should realign us, should adjust us, should bring us to a point where all right, we know what to do. Like the sons of Issachar. If we don't, if we can't read the times, we can't read, amen, all the unfolding realities around us, what do we do? You see, when things happen, God will speak. He will say, go to the mountain. He say, you who are in the valley, all right, move, shift to the mountain. We need to know, we need to understand so that we don't find ourselves in a state where it's like we don't know what to do. No, we always should know what to do. There should always be a, man, a point, a time where we are hearing God, where we are being led a man, to move. In times of disaster, God also moves us. He shifts us. In times of need, he shifts us. All right. Yes. When the brook dry, they say, go to Zarafat. You understand? Yes. We need to have a clear understanding of the speakings of God. We need to know where the Spirit of God is leading us, how the Spirit of God is leading us, what the Spirit of God is saying, particularly in times of the great shaking. Once more, it will shake the heavens and the earth. It says, see to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking, who speaks, amen. If Listen to this. The Bible says, if they did not escape, who are the people? Who are the day that did not escape? Of course, you know, the church in the wilderness, the children of Israel who came out of the land of bondage, if they did not escape, when they refused him who won them on earth, how much less, amen, will, if we turn away from him, warns us from heaven. In other words, if, if the warning that came to earth dwellers, all right, Yes, did not lose its impact, did not lose its effect. How much more, amen, less we, if we turn away. In other words, there's a voice that came from the earth warning the people. They didn't, ref they, they refused to listen. But now God says, I'm even speaking from an heavenly order, from a more, you know, advanced prophetic realm. All right. If we turn away from him who wants us from heaven. Meaning that there is a coming, there's a present prophetic word coming to warn us. All right, there was a man, Moses, warning them, giving them direction, giving them instruction, telling them what to do. They refused. The Bible says they did not escape the judgment. How much more we now that are being warned from heaven? Are you seeing something? Jesus Christ came, amen. He brought the word of the Lord. It wasn't, it wasn't from the earth. It came from heaven. It came from the Father. He brought the word of the Lord. He brought the mind of God. He came to warn us. And now his spirit is still, amen, in us, amen. We now have a, an opening to the heavenly voice, to the heavenly speaking, amen, to the current speakings of God, all right. And the scripture says, we will not escape. If we turn away from what, amen, the spirit of the Lord is saying from that heavenly order, we're not going to escape. How much, how much, how much less will we, if we turn away, I'm reading, you know, Hebrews 12, 25. How much more less we, if we turn away from him, from him, from Christ, who wants us from heaven. Verse 26 says, at that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has also promised once more, I will not only shake the earth, but also the heavens. But also the heavens. This is a powerful prophetic word for us. And this is why I believe the Lord is saying we need to return back to the place of the word. We, we're, we're not going to have an excuse in this season. Oh, well, nobody told me. Nobody warned me. No, no. That's why, you know, that, you know... Tea and bread, you know, a, a, a coffee Christianity. We have to throw it away. It's time to get serious with God. It's time to get serious with God. Our relationship, amen, needs to be more, you know, intensified in terms of listening, responding. Our heart, amen, must pursue and pulsate after Him. Amen. Yes, this is, I'm just reading scripture and I want you to really understand, all right, the, the emphasis here. The word once more, amen indicates indicates the, the scripture is interpreting itself the word the word once more indicate amen the removing of the removal of what can be shaken 
the removal, we like it or not, all the false beliefs, false theology, false doctrine, false, you know, identity we've imbibed, we've you know, accepted, you know, you know, as part of, you know, the things of God, ah, those things are going to, are going to be shaken off. So this is like, you know, preparing us, all right? The, 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 the word, you know, remover indicates, amen, yes, the shaking of things that can be removed. It says, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. I'm asking myself, what are those things in my life that cannot be shaken? What are those things in your life that cannot be shaken? You see, this is where you and I need to really get serious. What are those things in our life that can be shaken? And what are, those, are the things that are not shakable, that are unshakable? Do you know those things? Can you differentiate between the shakable things and the unshakable things? Come on, friends. This is a this is a now word, amen. The, the words once more indicate removing. Oh, when God start removing things in your life, I'm telling you, if you have soul tie, you have you know some connection to those things. You're going to feel, you know, devastated. You're going to, we, we have to know how to live life in this end of days. The concept of our belief system, values, you know, things that we hold too much tight. We hold too much, you know, that has too much hold on us. We have to learn to let go because they're bringing us into a point and a place where our life must be built, amen, on the eternal foundation that is unshakable. So if your foundation, if your values, your belief system, amen, your sense of spirituality and Christianity is just about, you know, some nice, easy, you know, easy going thing, you're going to get devastated. And a lot of people are going to be fighting and be angry with God. No, no, you need to get, you need to get this right. This is the scripture. The word of God cannot be broken. The word once more indicate the removal of what can be shaken. So if there are principles, values, belief system in our life, amen, pattern of thinking, lifestyle, you know, view, you know, lens that are shakable. The Bible says it, a, a very good example is when you, when you, when you manufacture, when a manufacturer manufactures something, you know, they take them through what they call quality control. They want to see if those things really can, yes, uh, 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 withstand the pressure of their use. They want to see if indeed this thing, you understand? Yes, it can, can withstand, you know, certain pressure, certain heat, certain challenges. And if those things, you know, given to compromise, they, they, they throw them away or recycle them, whatever they do, whatever they want to do with it. They, but they will not put those things out because to put those things out, all right, is to, of course, is to compromise the name of the company or the product. It's the same thing the Lord is doing with our life. So let's not say it's the devil. It's not the devil. It is God, amen, preparing and training us, making sure that indeed that we are ready, amen, for the heat, for the challenge. You think when the truth, you know, those Hebrew children into the fire, you think the Lord had not prepared them. When the, when the truth, those Hebrew you know, uh, guys into the fire. They they had been prepared. You, you, you could see from their from their from their words. Oh, King, don't even think about it. You can do whatever way you're gonna do, but we are not gonna bow. We're not gonna compromise. That that is not some good talk. Th that is a talk from a position of experience, from a position of encounter. When you see somebody who had journey with God, who had an who has who has got an experience with, when they talk, you will know that oh, this one is coming from somewhere. <laughs> you understand? You can't you can't you can't talk them out, and that's what the Lord is doing. Those are the concept of the removal of the things in our life, so that our focus, Amen. Yes, is set like a fleet that we have an eagle eye, Amen. That we are we are we are determined. We are we are, we, we we refuse, Amen to give in to the lies of the enemy and they will use the day-to-day -day challenges of life yes to prepare us 
That's why I say we need to redef redefine how we look at suffering, how we look at challenges, how we look at trial, how we look at temptation. All of that, amen, is to prepare us for something bigger. Many of us want to be, want to be used by God. God, use me. <laughs> God, I want to be a voice for you. Huh? You really? Truly? Are you sure? All right. If you want to, they will begin to shake your life. They will begin to put you through tests. Quality control. Because God cannot use a uh, instrument that can easily uh, give him bow all right, to pressure. The moment they touch you, oh, no, 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 please, 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 please. No. They will put you through certain tests. All right? If it's on the area of money, some of us, with, oh, I, I no. The reason why you don't have, the reason why is because they are testing your allegiance. They want to see where your heart is. They want to see where your allegiance is. Some of us, God, I want this person. I want that person as a wife, as a husband. All right. Now that we understand that marriage is not what a man, yes, you know, uh, 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 how we, how God defines it. Now they're bringing a new concept, a new understanding amen of what this thing is and they begin to test you they begin to prepare you if indeed you are ready to connect with the kind of a man and a woman you understand heaven has ordained for the vision they want both of you to fulfill they will test you in that area test your values test your character test amen your sense of humility amen and your sense of vision they will test all of that they're not trying to break you they're trying to prepare you it's, it's part of the process Lord, I can handle that church. Oh God, make me send me. I, I want. They will test your commitment. You see, they will test your heart as a father, as a shepherd. They will test. They will make sure. You, you listen. You you don't you you don't need people. Don't need to respond to you. It is God who is testing you. That's why I don't do things you know for pe for people's applaud. No, I don't. I don't. I saw what is happening, you know, in, in the Utenek area in the Eastern Cape. And I said to my, I mean, I felt so bad about what else. I know that I, I know one or two people who live in that end. I thought it is my responsibility, all right, to, you know, to share my heart and condolence to people who have lost their life. I'm, I'm not waiting for people in that area to even respond. No, because that's between me and God. As a father, what would you do if, if such a thing is happening? I mean, if if I have families there who have been devastated, how would I feel? That is ministry. That's how we track if indeed we are journeying with God. No. It cannot be that, oh, well, no, but I, it doesn't concern me. It should concern you. It should concern you. But you want to lead. You want to be a leader. How can you be a leader? How can God make you a leader where you don't even have a heart of a leader? Where you don't even have a heart of a father, but you call yourself a father in the land? God will use little, little things to test us. To see if indeed we are able. Before David, amen, fought Goliath, he had fought bears. He had fought, amen, lions. Guess what? There was nobody there. When David was fighting the bear, when David killed, the, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the lion, it, nobody was there. So nobody to even validate him. I said, ah, we saw David. <laughs> but guess what? He will see what you do in the secret, will reward you openly. That's what we're talking, talking about. That's the thing, amen, the spirit of God, amen, is emphasizing in this end of days. We all have to look into our life. They will check and, and, you know, if God wants you to be a voice, amen, in this prophetic season, they will test you with every kind of, you know, realities. They will test you because what did, what did they need, amen, is men and women who have, amen, a leadership spirit. Remember, I always say, leadership is not first a portfolio. Leadership, amen, is a condition of your heart. Leadership is a condition of your spirit. Leadership is how you feel and how you think towards others. And there is a need in this season. The dynamics, amen, of our day requires a new cream, a new set of, amen, governmental, prophetic, amen, leaders. 
people who move, amen, by the heart of God, who God can move their heart, who, who have the ability to quickly respond, all right? You, something is happening far away from where you are and the Lord is tearing your heart to pray towards that thing. And the Lord is tearing your heart. You don't understand that everything about God, there's a connection. There's a connection. There's a connection. Everything about the things of God are inter, interconnected, interconnected. Oh, no, no, no. I don't need to bother about Isaiah Phillips. No, you need to bother because they will use Isaiah Phillips to test, to test, amen, your sense of readiness in Eastern Cape, your sense of readiness in America. Is your sense of readiness, yes, in, in, in United Kingdom, in, in Canada. Yes, how you're responding to people. How you're responding to people's challenge, to societal need, to societal, you know, challenges, to individual need. They will use that to prove your heart. You think God amen, is into the idea of coincidence. There are no coincidence in God. If God ever bring you across somebody you met 10 years ago, there's a reason for that. There are no coincidence in God. God uses everyone that God brings across, amen, your path, an uh, instrument to refine you, to prepare you, amen, to align you. Some of you, maybe you're listening to me right now, amen, there's a reason why you're listening to this voice, to these words. So there are no coincidence. Remember the word is, he will see what you do secretly. So you, you, if, you, if, you, if you want, amen, you can be accountable to the word or you can refuse it. You say, ah. I mean, people, as I've began to broadcast, many would have come and listen and just, you know, move on, move on to whatever they want to do because it doesn't, the word doesn't matter to them. But guess what? We will all be accountable. So we need to really present our hearts to the Lord and continue to ask the Lord, God, my heart, my heart, my heart, my heart. It's all about heart. Those who will destroy Babylon, who will pull down the kingdoms of darkness, who will refuse to bow, you understand? Who will stand to challenge the lies of politicians in this last day? It will be because they have a right heart. So not because they have deep pocket. No, no, it will never be because they have a deep pocket. God can create deep, deep pocket in second. God can give you money in, in split second. But, can, but he can give you a man a right heart immediately no they will take you through process 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 they will bring you through all kinds of things they want to see if indeed you're mature can you handle this thing the gift god has given to you they want to see how you amen how you have used it yes in the former you know seasons how you how you have allowed us you know giftings amen to advance the purpose of god god doesn't believe in taking you from a and just jump you straight you understand to e or to you know to you know to h and or to z no he who is faithful in little <clears throat> he who is faithful in little much will be committed into their hands how faithful are we in the little God has given to us? How faithful are we, amen, in just calling somebody and say, Hey, bro, I hope everything is well with you out there. How are you coping with this d d disaster? How I hope everything is fine. Have you checked your brother? Have you checked your sister? You living in those areas of disaster. What are you doing? What is the church doing? What can, I'm not saying what we can do for each other. What we can do for even people, all right, who are not like us. What are you doing for that Muslim person whose house it may have been devastated? What are you doing for those who don't come to your church, who don't belong to your company? What are you doing for them? By this shall men know. You see, our walk with God is very practical. Yes. Whatever we receive from the Lord, God expects us to manifest them in the practicality of life. We cannot, amen, in this season, give an excuse. So the point is, God will continue to shake, amen, our value system. Selfishness must die. Self-centeredness must die. You understand? And what makes us selfish and self-centered is the needs of life. The needs of life, all right, are very good in expressing our true nature. <laughs> I mean... 
when you are hit with need, difficult time, that's when a man self, yes, gains more power. That's when you want to express more. You want to keep the little you have. You understand? You want to protect yourself. But based on the scripture, that's a time to give. That's a time to go all out. That's a time to reach out to others. This is what we are losing as the body of Christ. These are some of the things we are losing. While we're singing, amen, singing our nice song, our hearts are getting more hardened. Our conscience are becoming more seared. We're becoming more worldly, more carnal, more selfish, more self-centered. When we read scripture, we only read scripture for our own benefit. We don't read scripture for the betterment of society, for the advancement you understand, of creation. We don't read scripture from the context of the kingdom of God. In fact, our idea of the kingdom is just for our own you know, blessing. The, where, you say, where you hear people say kingdom, kingdom is for themselves. That's not a church that Christ, amen, will be glorified in. So we must go back to that point that I said, the Lord told me, all right, in this new month of, 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 of July, we have to understand that we need a new prophetic scope, a new prophetic perspective because we have been ushered into a new season. Whenever they usher us into a new season, we need to understand the prophetic amen, requirement for that season. We need to understand the emphasis of the season. We need to understand the demand of the season prophetically so we know how to engage accurately, so we know how to engage amen, without being compromised. You have to, amen. But if you're selfish and self-centered, you're not going to see it. You don't even have the time to make inquiries. You don't have the time to ask the Lord, what are you saying? What are you doing? And this is the reason why the Lord said, in this, in this period in time, intensify your hunger and passion for Christ. Don't let, amen, the fire and the hunger and your longing for Christ, amen, to, you know, to die. Don't let that fire die. Oh, God, I want to know you more. God, I want to walk with you the more. Lord, help me, yes, to track your heart, your voice. When I wake up in the morning, I want my heart, Lord, yes, to long for your court. David said, I was glad when they said to me, that's not just going to a local church. When this, let's go to the house of God. Where is the house of God in this new day? What is God emphasizing? What is God demanding of me. When you go to the house of God, you're not just going to see your brother, you're going to see Christ. You're going to worship God. You're going to honor him. Hallelujah. Yes. Christ must become more magnified in your interaction. Amen. We want to hear more Christ in your vocabulary, in your thought life. Amen. In your sense of expression, in your sense of dealing. As you speak, as you deal with people, let Christ amen, be the umpire. Let Christ be the focal. Let Christ be amen, the motivation. Amen. You're talking to somebody. Bring Christ into that discussion. I'm not saying slap them with, with Jesus' name. Bring his value. Bring his nature. That's what I'm talking about. And the more you do that, the more, amen, you quench the voice of the flesh. Let your discussion be, amen, a discussion that is, motiv that is motivated and that will glorify Christ. That is the first thing the Lord said, all right? Intensify your hunger and passion. Weigh your love for Christ, amen, yes, on the scale of the preferences of your life. Weigh your love for Christ on the scale of preference. Where would you, where would you place your love for Christ today? How would you define your love for Christ today? Compare, amen, to, all right, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, all right? How would you compare your love? Has it increased or has it diminished? Hello? Is your love for Christ today, you understand, more fervent? Or are you just, <laughs> Lord help me. <laughs> you get my point? So, you need to go back. These are things we need. You see, this is homework for us. As we engage July, right? This is homework for us. I know there are all kinds of things, particularly if you're living in South Africa. I mean, there's such, uh, you, can, you can almost feel the uncertainty in the air. As you're dealing with, all right, all kinds of issues from the political realm, we're also seeing disaster, you know, natural disaster. You, know, you understand? If you remember, if you if you if you if you are very good at remembering, remember uh, uh, just towards that period where we had that you know uh, uh, um, 
eclipse that showed up in America, there was this terrible wind in, in, in Western Cape that toppled vehicles from, you know, from, from the bridge downwards. I mean, you, you were seeing extreme, extreme weather disaster in South Africa. Who do you think will be responsible, amen, to bring order, to bring structure like Jesus, hallelujah, yes, calm the, calm the storm, calm the sea, peace be still. Who will do Do you think it's the government that can do, that will do that? Of course. It has to be a kind of, you know, company of men who have the, the authority, hallelujah, to speak to weather, who, who can speak amen, like Joshua, amen, son, stand still. What? Well, the character, are you see what I'm talking about? There has to be a company of kingdom men whose life, amen, have been eaten up by the values of Christ who can say to the sea, be calm. When they talk about, you know, that, that wind that blows from, you know, Durban, you know, Abba, I mean, the economy of a nation is shut down when that wind begins. <laughs> They literally shut down the economy. I could remember there was a time just because of that Durban wind alone. I was I was told that you know some millions millions were lost just in in few days. All of this is speaking and calling for a caliber of a company of men and women. That because there's a Joseph in the land, there's a Joseph, Amen, in that dimension, Amen. We can bring order to creation. And those are some of the things that allow, you understand, people in high places, in power, to look at us and say, there is no God like your God. Because they can see that you are the one who prayed, who spoke, who released the word of God. And they can see, amen, a corresponding action. They're like, wow, I want to know that you're God. There's a way, amen, that we will, we will evangelize in this last day that even the kings will bow the knees. Excuse me, did not Nebuchadnezzar bow the knees to the God of Daniel? Uh -huh. But that did not happen, amen, just because, you know, these guys were some, you know, uh, uh, zealous Christians. No, it's because they knew their God. Those who know their God. Those who know their God, the Bible says they will be strong. That's the first thing the Bible says. And then they will do exploit. They will be strong. That was to be strong means to be courageous. They will stand their ground. They will be strong. The nations need our strength. Humanity needs our strength in this end of days. Government will need our strength. And you know, strength represents so many things. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yesterday I said, your strength is the power, the competence, the reality of the vision God has given to you. God always invests his strength within his call and purposes for our life. You don't, God doesn't give you strength for just giving you strength. Why would, why would he give you strength when you don't, you don't, you don't need amen, strength? You, you don't need strength for anything. No, they give you strength for something. Money is strength. If they know that you need strength, amen, in, in the area, hallelujah, that require money to express, they will bring it. They will bring it. So when we're asking even for our need, it has to be, like I said, within the context of God's purpose for our life. God doesn't give us things just to prove a point. Well, because you're my child. No, your child, amen, must grow to become a son so that they can commit certain, amen, resources, certain, you know, a, a wealth into your hands. That as long as you're a child, amen, you cannot come into the position of exercising authority as a prince. Because the devil you're going to be dealing with out there, they are prince. They understand power. They understand authority. They understand, you understand, yes, issues of taking land, taking nations, issues of devastating society. And this is why God said, I'm going to shake everything that can be shaken in your life so you can begin to walk into your day of maturity. You can enter into that position where you can exercise regency in the earth. Are you, are you seeing the context to what we're saying, what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us? 
So if things are not happening the way, amen, you expect them, two things can either be the case, all right? Either you've been derailed, distracted from, you know, the, the, the place God has called you to, amen, to be focused, you understand? Or they are still shaping certain values and character in your life because God is not wicked. God is not wicked. Just like that, it can awaken somebody to assist you. If assistance is not coming, don't be hitting your head on the wall. Continue to do what you need to do. Continue to, amen, refine yourself, refine the vision. Continue, hallelujah, to, to make sure that you, you are being trained in the gym, preparing yourself so that when the call comes, you're ready. And God knows when you're ready and he knows when you're not ready. Many of us are not ready because we're, we're already being distracted by the fact that we, we're not seeing, all right? what we want we're not experiencing what we want so we decide to go do our own thing the more you shift away from the purpose and the call of god and the vision of god for your life the more you're delaying your day of manifestation because every one of us has got a day of manifestation your manifestation is not to prove a point to anybody you only manifest to carry out god's intention you see david you see you see, you see joseph from prison all right from prison, amen, yes, to the throne. Who does that? It can only be a man that God had prepared. So God will be preparing you, preparing your character, preparing your attitude. It's not just about your giftings. No, what sustains the giftings is your character. It's your, and this is why God is saying, amen, intensify your hunger and passion for Christ. The more you become more like Christ, the more you are able to see things in godly way in a godly way the reason why you easily get angry and you fight everything around you is because your mind has been shifted from christ christ regulates your character christ regulates your behavior the more christ amen is magnifying your life the more humble you become have you noticed that the only time you express pride is when you have lost sight of christ in your life It's when you, have ex when you have lost sight of Christ. You can just be doing church and doing, you know, your, you know, TikTok, Facebook, you know, still doing all those religious things. But you are far away. You're just a, a, a mouth Christian. Your, your heart is far away. Are you getting the point? But what God is looking for, what he's looking for, what they are looking for is your heart. Because the heart is the place where God transacts a business with. It's a place where God transacts his business. It's a place where God deposits, amen, his, his intention. It's a place where God deposits his power. It's a place where the strength, hallelujah, of a man lies. It's in your heart. I found, a, I found a man, yes, whose heart, whose heart is after me. So intensify your hunger and passion for Christ. That's number one. Number two, amen. Making reading, make it a deliberate thing. Take the Bible deliberately. Read it. When you have, amen, yes, you know, spare time. In fact, you don't need to wait for spare. Make time. Read the scripture, amen. Listen to the scripture. Study the word of God, not to preach. Study the word of God to guide you. Don't study the word of God to preach. Study the word to guide you. Study the word to lead you. Study the word to change you. Study the word of God. Amen. Make the word of God part and parcel of your life, of your day-to-day -day life. Amen. Of your day-to-day -day life. Are you getting the point? These are some of the ways, amen, that heaven will keep us from the darkness of the day. The last one, the third, the third word is let amen is assignment. It's assignment. I just talked about that. That's the vision. Let the vision, the assignment for your life be the focal point of your motivation, of your motivation. Don't let well money should not be your motivation. The vision of God for your life should be your motivation. You understand? Comfort should not be your motivation. The vision of God earlier should be your motivation. Friends, relationship should not be your, be your motivation. The vision of God for your life should be what's motivating you. You see, there's a reason why God highlighted these three words. 
What should be motivating you today as you get ready, preparing to go to work, should be the vision of God. Listen to this. Listen to this. There's always a route to fulfilling the vision of God. Some of you, you may just be, amen, at the first stage of that route to fulfilling it. Some of us, you're the, at the second stage. Some, all right, you are hitting the third dimension. But don't be distracted. Don't allow the enemy to talk you out. Amen. To, you know, to Tarsus. When God has sent you, amen, to Nineveh. Hello, let me repeat that again. Don't allow the enemy to talk you away from your route to Nineveh. All right. When, you know, to, you know, to, excuse me, to Tarsus. When God has sent you to Nineveh. Even as a prophet. Need sometimes can derail us, amen, can sidetrack us from the path of God. Always looking for, amen, where, you know, <laughs> where the grass are, where the grass are green. Listen, somebody says there is no place where the grass are green or where the grass are not green. All right. All you need to do is just water the, what, water the dry grass. You will see they will turn green. Are you getting this? Where the Lord send you is where you find rest for your soul. What God wants you to do, amen. And listen, big vision starts with little, little things. Things that we don't take, right, we, we don't take serious. Things that we look at and like, ah, doesn't matter. Things like how you respond to people. How you connect with people. Your courtesy with people. Your, 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 your respect. Little, little, little things. You're looking at big things. No, heaven looks at those little, little things. Because it's those little, little things, amen, that makes up for the big moments. That's my belief. It is the little, little things that makes up for the big moments. There are certain people I will not walk with, amen, in this new day of my life. You know why? Because little, 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 little things has proven that they are you know, people you can't walk with, you cannot depend on, you can't trust. God will use the crisis of life, yes, for you to see your own heart and the heart of people. What a day. What a sacred day we live in. God will even use your own failure to expose the failure of other people to you. God will use your vulnerability to expose the vulnerability of other people. Your own vulnerability, but God is using that to expose other people. See, that's why we cannot take things for granted in the days we live in. If you ever think God is going to come down, be pointing and be writing on the wall. The handwriting is already on the wall. Can you see it? Can you read it? And if you're reading it, you can only amen, relate to that if you have amen. In focus the vision of God for your life because if you don't have a vision of God for your life everything amen yes will become a distraction to you everything amen catches your attention it should not be your life should be guided amen by what God wants to carry to excuse me by what God wants to do with your life the value system of your life amen should be what is motivating Yes, your connection, your movement, your interaction, you understand, your relationship with people. Because at the end of the day, that is what is going to give you joy and fulfillment. It's not going to be because you win a jackpot. It's not going to be, be because you win a lotto. It's not going to be because you understand. Yes, you finally met the president or you, no, no, no. It's because you are moving towards the place of the fulfillment of God's intention for your life. Ask Moses. It was in the finest place you can ever think of. Many of the things that Christians today are pursuing are the things that Moses left behind. He was in the palace. He was enjoying his life. The Bible says when he came of age, he, he changed his identity. He refused to live in a palace. Who, do, who, 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 who does such a thing that you don't want to live in a palace? He says, Bible says he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. That is the pursuit of many Christians. Just to be called the son of Pharaoh. Just to be, just to bear a name. Just to be in the palace. But Moses, that's a power of vision. And what we need in this end, end of days, amen, is the awakening of our vision because it is vision that will be linking people together. 
I'm going to be speaking more of that in, in this month. It is vision that will be lit. Because you see, within our vision are the potentials, amen, of our resources, amen, of our relationship, of, you know, uh, uh, the kinds of people that we need to work with. You understand? Yes. Vision is what is going to be connecting us, connecting us to resources. People, amen, will, will connect to you and begin to, you know, finance what you're doing because they can relate to what you are expressing. So you've got to understand that even your pain is part of, yes, the vision. Your need is part of, yes, the vision. Your, your challenges. I, I spoke about that. I did an article on that. Learn to embrace your identity. This is not just a mark you have on your face. It's not just the color of your skin. Your identity is defined by your vision. There I said, your identity will be defined by your vision. Your identity, amen, will be defined your vision. And your vision will be leading you like a river. Will be taking you from place to place. You'll be flowing. Are you getting this, friends? What a day we're living. What a sacred day we're living. We need to press in more into the spirit. We need to ask the Lord, help us. Help me, O oh God. I don't want to be found wanting in this end of day. Plant my feet. Maybe I have shifted myself from where, you're, where I'm supposed to be. Lord, replant me there. Take me back. Relocate me. Relocate me back. You see, Moses, excuse me, uh, 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 Abraham. Abraham was on his journey to the place of God's purpose. At some point in his life, he derailed. Bible says when he left Egypt, he, re, he, he had to reroute back to the path, yes, of Cana. Back to the path that God has ordained for. Sometimes in our journey with, with God, amen, we, we choose because of need and because of all kinds of things. We choose to go to all kinds of places. It's time to reroute. It's time to reroute. Abraham had to reroute. Hallelujah. So, what's the word? As I, you know, ran up this morning. Intensifying the month of July. Of course, I'm just giving you, a, you know, a, you know, a, a, more like a frame, you know, foundational framework of how we must engage this month and the rest of the year. Remember, we, we just step into the beginning, into the you know, a, a, a half journey of, of the year. So the rest part is what we're looking into now. Okay, friends? We have to intensify our hunger and passion. All right? So whatever you're doing, let it increase your passion. Let it increase your hunger for Christ. Within the crisis, that, that's the context. Within the crisis, within the lack, within the need, within the pain, with, within the devastation, within, hallelujah, you losing precious things. Maybe even maybe losing people, all right? Loved ones in the midst of that. God, yes, it's painful, but I want to know you more. I need to know you more. Take me deeper, Lord. Don't leave me in the shallow realm. Don't leave me in the shallow realm. Take me deeper. Take me deeper. I want to know you more. I increase. Touch my heart. Give me a burden for you. Christ, I need to know you. I want to know you. I desire you more than life itself. I hunger and I quest. I thirst for you. Fill me. Help me never to be satisfied. Yes, with this, with this, with this hunger. Help me never to be satisfied. Don't satisfy me, but Lord, help me to continue to quest and yearn and passionately desire you. I love you. I want more of you. Lead me. Wherever you lead me is good for my soul. Whatever you demand of me, Lord, is what I want. I will never dictate to you. I surrender to your leading. Lord, pour me out as a river, as a stream. Lead me. Help me to follow you. I want to journey with you. I want to go with you. I want my life, oh God, yes, to reflect your good pleasure. Take me deeper into the pleasures of your word. Make your word, oh God, yes, my desire, my quest. Yes, help me to love your word, to listen, to study. Yes, instruct me. Guide me by your word. Lead me by your word. Don't leave me to my own thing. Oh God, keep my eyes focused on you. Keep my mind focused on you. 
because I know, yes, the nations will be needing me. I know my community will be needing me. And I cannot go, Lord, without being filled. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Make me a vessel for your glory. Make me an instrument for your glory. Shake everything that can be shaken. You said once more, <laughs> indicates the removal of things that can be shaken. And that is created things, whatever things men have created in my mind, in my thoughts, whatever idea, imagination, belief system that are false, whatever I, you know, I, 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 concepts, oh God, that I've I, imbibe, accepted, that does not glorify you, that is not in alignment with your will. Father, I pray, may those things right now start falling off my life. Yes, wrong things that I'm holding on to, wrong ideas, wrong beliefs, oh God, that I'm holding on to. I pray, let those things fall off. Let those things collapse. I'm asking you, oh God, that you will, oh God, do a new thing in my life. You will do a new thing in my life. You will do a new thing in my life. I'm asking of you, fill me, change me, give me grace, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And the more you do that, the more you begin to walk and see the wisdom, the realization, the counsels of God. In, my, in, your, in your life. Friends, this, these are things the Spirit of the Lord, amen, is, is demanding of us, is requiring of us. These are things the Spirit of God, amen, is demanding of us, is requiring of us. Let's become, amen, men and women who understand the craftings of the Spirit, amen, in, particularly in the month of June. Uh, sorry about that. I, it was a mistake. I put July. All right. We're still in the month of June. You can see my mind is, 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 is running ahead. <laughs> Thank you, my dear sister, uh, Nkumisa, for, for uh, um, highlighting that. Amen, friends. Let God, let the Spirit of God, amen, bring you to a new perspective, to a new sense of understanding. Let there be, I mean, a leadership, amen, a, a, a awakening spirit in your heart. God, position me. Let me be a voice. Let me be an instrument. As you, as you bring us into a new day over this land of South Africa, Father, I pray, may, may I not be shifted. May I not be led astray. May I not flow with the wind that is changing people. Let me stay. Let me be positioned. Let me be rooted, oh God, in your desire and demand for my life. I'm presenting myself to you. I'm presenting myself. I want to be, yes, an instrument of leadership shift. I want to be an instrument of leadership shift. I want to be an instrument of leadership transformation. I want to be an instrument in your hand to the glory of your name. Spirit of God, I thank you. Let my life be a house that you're building. Let my life reflect a house that you're building, that you're transforming. Let wisdom build this house. And friends, the more we do this, the more we walk, amen, in that sense of understanding of the demand of God, of the, of the will of God for our life. This is what I believe the Spirit of God really, truly wants us to, you know, walk in, know and understand. All right. So many things are happening around our life. We cannot, amen, go bury our life or bury ourselves and think, well, uh, doesn't concern me. No, it concerns us. Let's continue to build amen, an altar for God in our various community. Amen. Let's continue to pray unto God. Let our life rise up as a sweet smelling incense, rising to God. Amen. Changing the spiritual atmosphere of our, of our environment. Let's continue to call upon the name of the Lord. Let us not, amen, fold our hand and give up and embrace a defeatist mindset. No, we refuse to be defeated. Father, we honor you this morning. We thank you for your spirit, yes, that is awakening us. Thank you, Lord, for an awakening. Thank you, Lord, for your word, your will, your purposes, oh God. Yes, changing our lifestyle, changing our mindset, changing our sense of thinking. Thank you, Father, for grace, possibilities taking place possibility we speak oh god in the name of jesus that right now there is a change taking place within our lives within our homes within our family within our career as you speak to us we declare that we move towards the point and place where your vision for us is becoming even more clearer yes we will position ourselves like abacock on the on the wall we will watch to see what you will say to us we declare lord that this vision we make it plain we write it down thank you for for a glory 
glorious, righteous nation. Thank you for a people moving towards a place of your good pleasure. Thank you for your truth that is prevailing this day. Thank you, Father, for your ways, oh God. Yes, your ways, your ways, the ways of the law, your methods, oh God. Thank you for your method, your method, your method, your purposes, your desire. Give us, oh God, a heart that is open. Remove from us, oh God, yes, a stony heart. Remove from us, oh God, a stony heart. Give us a heart of flesh that when we hear, we are quick to respond. We are quick to respond. We are quick to respond in obedience, in obedience, in obedience, in obedience. We are quick to respond. Lord, as you use the challenges of life to prove us, to prove our heart, to prove our life, may our allegiance be unto you. We want to walk with you and we want to walk with those, oh God, whom you are using this moment and this season, yes, to realign back to the place of your good pleasure. Connect us, knit us together, knit our lives together, connect our minds together, help us to see this moment as sacred, help us to understand the requirement, your requirement for this new day, help us, Father, yes, to humble ourselves, humility, friends, I cannot overemphasize the place of humility in this period in time, pride, pride will blind us, pride will shut our our ears from hearing God, from responding to the demand of God. Pride will continue to give you 1,001 reasons why you must take your ground and, 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 and express yourself the way you want to express yourself. No, pride, the Bible says, goes before a fall. Lord, we humble ourselves. We fall on the rock. We ask you, Lord, change us, O oh God. We surrender to your dealings. We surrender to your voice. We surrender to your speakings. We humble ourselves. We take the towel. We bend to wash the feet of our brothers and sisters. We take the towel. We bend our knees with water to wash the feet of our brothers and sisters. Help us, Father, to humble ourselves. Say, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. We humble ourselves. As a community, as a nation, we humble ourselves. We turn to you. We glorify you. You are worthy, O oh God, of our praise. Thank you, Lord, for how you are moving upon this land, upon this nation. You're not true. You're just beginning. We bring all our politicians. We present them before you. We declare this day that they will respond to your prophetic desire and design for this nation. We refuse every form of commotion and division. We refuse every lie of the enemy that wants to turn this nation into a place of confusion. We declare your truth is prevailing right now as they sit down wherever they are talking about coalitions and a, a government of unity, whatever they call it, Father, we declare and decree that only your will will prevail. Only your will will prevail. Only your will will prevail. The will of men, the will of systems, wherever they are, wherever they are gathering, whatever is their agenda over South Africa, we say it will not prevail. You will be glorified over this land. You will be exalted over this nation. Your kingdom will prevail. Your will will prevail. Your truth will prevail. Yes, we declare it. We proclaim it. We decree your righteousness will spring forth. Your righteousness will spring forth. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for one nation under your rule and government. As we pray for this land, we pray, O oh God, for the continent and the rest of the world. Let your glory, let the knowledge of your glory cover the earth as the water covers the sea. Let it be said that Jesus Christ rule and reign over this land. Let it be said that Jesus Christ rules and reigns over this nation. 
This is our prayer, Father. This is our request. And we ask you to bless this land. And we know you've already blessed this land, but we ask, let this blessing, O oh God, yes, be evenly distributed. L give us leaders who know how to redistribute the wealth of this land to benefit, yes, the people of the land. Not just some few rich people. Lord, we thank you. We honor you. Because your word says, when we ask, we receive. We ask and we receive. Thank you for a change. Thank you for healing this land. We pray for those who have been devastated of natural disaster of late from KwaZulu Natal, oh God, to the Eastern Cape, Lord. We ask, oh God, that you, you will touch our leaders to respond, to do what is right. But also we pray for these people. Give them peace. Give them a sense of rest and joy. We thank you, Lord, that there is hope, ability, grace to rebuild, to restore. We receive for them, Lord. We thank you for those who need healing in the hospital. Thank you, Lord, that you minister to them. We honor you. We bless your name. All across the land, all across the nation, we speak the peace of God. But more so, we speak that the heart of men will run to you. Oh, that people will cry out to you. They will long for you. They will call upon you. Redemption, restoration we seek for. Redemption, redemption of life. Touch the lives, oh God, of the young and the old. The teenagers, the millennials, bring them, draw them away from, yes, their own thing, from religion and tradition and entertainment. Let them have a deep, passionate desire to walk with you. This is what we pray for. This is what we ask for. Whoever is out there this morning in need of your divine touch, Father, touch them, touch them, touch their lives, touch, oh God, yes, their income, touch their finance, bring them to the place of increased abundance. We break every spirit, oh God, of, of the enemy trying to lie and steal, yes, from your people. We declare, devour us are rebuked for their sake. We thank you, Father, for divine provision. We thank you, Father, for divine, yes, increase. Thank you, Father, for a change, transformation in the life of your people. This morning, I decree that in this new day, in this month of June, the Spirit of the Lord will continue to flow and continue to bless you and continue to enrich you and increase you and prosper you because that is the will of God. You are blessed. You are, you are, you are blessed. Your household is blessed. Your home is blessed. Your career business is blessed. All that concerns you, I speak blessing in the name of Jesus to your handwork. I declare you will walk with God. You will see God. Your vision, yes, yes, will be, become more clearer. You will hear. You will respond to the demand of God for your life. He will lead you. You will respond and you will find abundance. He will let the prophet to the place Yes, of provision is leading you right now in the name of Jesus. Favor, I proclaim, I declare upon your life. Favor, I declare upon your household in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you right now for what you are doing. In the life of your people. Thank you for supernatural provision. Thank you for supernatural provision. And yet supernatural encounter. Yes, Father, I thank you. For you are able, yes, to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we can ever imagine or think according to your power that is at work in us. Thank you, Father, for your power that is at work. Thank you, Lord, for lifting your people to that point and place where they can truly represent your prophetic demand and desire for their life. Thank you, Father. You who have begun a good work in them, you are able to finish it. You are able to perfect it to the glory of your name. Thank you, Father, for a change. Thank you, Father, for a change. Thank you, Lord. Yes, 
yes, for the wind of change. Thank you, Father, for the wind of change. Thank you that the old has passed, the new has come. I declare, proclaim right now, favor, goodness, mercy in the name of Jesus is your portion in Jesus' name. Be healed, be restored, be transformed. The peace of God, the righteousness of God is your portion in Jesus' name. Father, we honor you. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father, for divine opening. Thank you, Father, for divine lifting. Thank you, Father, for divine opening, divine lifting. Yes, there's a lifting of your head. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I bind heart, mind, and soul to your will right now. Thank you, mind, heart, and soul are bound to your will. In the name of Jesus, men and women are coming to the place of divine, yes, appointment. I bless you, Father. I honor you to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, that is, I believe, some of the exaltation the Spirit of the Lord will have us share this morning. I want to believe that you, you have been ministered to, you have been imparted, you have been built up. Don't forget, you're a city set on a hill that is not hidden. Let the Word of God, let the will of God, let the counsels of God for your life continue to flow like a river. Let that which God has begun in your life, amen, continue to increase. Thank you so very much this morning for joining us, for listening. We want to thank God for a brand new day, a brand new month, amen, brand new expression. Thank, thank God for what the Lord, amen, has established this morning. I'll see you again, friends, hopefully tomorrow or maybe even later today as the Spirit of the Lord will lead me. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good one. Bye-bye.